to really understand masculine energy, one must really understand that you're really talking about a spiritual phenomenon, hmm. right? Not a performance, hmm. right? Masculinity, I believe, is really when a, a male being, and I start there because I think masculinity houses itself in, a, in maleness, hmm. meaning human beings, right, right who, who have male anatomy. Um, but, but I don't believe it's automatic as most people do. Mm. I don't think that just because a person is male, one automatically is masculine, mm. but nor do I think because a person is male that he, that he is norm necessarily a man either. Mm. Right. But for that matter, I think a person can be male. I mean, a, a person can be a man mm. and not be biologically male too. Mm. Yeah. Right. You know, we talk about trans mm -hmm. existence, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is I think masculinity is ultimately what it means to walk the planet like God in a male body. Mm. What does that look like, Dr. Black? Um, I think that looks like respecting all living things, all living forms. Mm -hmm. I think that looks like refusing to refusing to be insulted by other people's failings, mm. other people's shortcomings. Mm -hmm. I think that looks like absolutely honoring and, and respecting a woman if a man is heteronormative. Mm. I think that looks like absolutely honoring and respecting a man if a brother is same gender loving, mm. right? I think that, um, I think that looks like a, 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 a one who, who, who goes out of his way to to attempt to be whatever he imagines God is. Because I think our role, I think life, I think the point of life is to see if a human being can imagine himself, can imagine herself in the, in the form of the divinity to which we pray. Hmm. I think whatever you pray to is what you're supposed to become. That's deep, yes. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's the point of praying to it, that ultimately you're supposed to be that. Mm -hmm. Else, uh, or either God is just really arrogant, hmm. right? For us to just to have to pray to God and bow down. To God. I don't think I don't think God needs our adoration. I don't think God needs our exaltation. I don't mm. think God needs it. Mm. I think we need it mm. as human beings. Ooh, that's a different type of conversation, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I think mm. you know to look at you, Caleb, and say, um, "I adore you. Mm. I honor you. I mm. bow before you. Mm. I worship you, my brother." Mm. See, that does something for us. God is so excellent and God is so marvelous and God is so perfect. I'm not sure that makes God feel better. He already knows that. God is so, I mean, <laughs> yeah. surely God is already aware. That's right. You know? Mm. Yeah. I feel that. Okay. So, you know, on that same point, in the streets, you know, you can say, hey, that's a nigga over there. Not, that's my brother over there. Sure. How do we try to change how we like talk to each other? And also what impact does seeing a quote unquote nigga have on, on I would say, like the black man's mind? Because then I don't see a friend, a brother. Instead, I see opposition, an enemy. I think our use of the word nigga is the greatest sign of our love for plantation existence. Hmm. I think every time we say nigga, we don't know it, but, but not only are we calling each other nigga, we're also calling somebody else master. I think we re-enter that construct every single time we use that word and we use it as a people all the time it's all in our music it floods everywhere and i think it keeps us locked it keeps us incarcerated on on the plantation hmm. because then we end up acting like it we end up treating one another like it we end up believing we look like it hmm. you know we we treat our children like it you know and i think the word nigga is absolutely poison mm. to black people. Mm. I really, really believe that. Mm. I think it absolutely poisons our notion um, of who we are. And until we get to the place where we understand the power of the tongue and we understand the power of language, what we call ourselves means everything in terms of how we respect ourselves, how we honor, honor ourselves or how we don't. Mm. That's right. Right. And it's the sign to it's the sign too that we think God and Jesus are white. Mm. Because we never call Jesus my nigga, but we'll call each other that easily. Mm. That lets you know we don't think Jesus is in the brotherhood. Mm. Come on. Because Jesus is too honored to be respected.
Jesus is too Jesus is too respectful to be demeaned by being called nigger. But you ain't. Mm. Right. Um, and so we never refer to our divinities the same way we, we refer to ourselves. That's the sign of self-hatred. Mm hmm. Because I should be able to call you what I call God. Hmm. And I should be able to call God what I call you. That's right. If, if there's a distinction, there's somebody I don't adore. Hmm. I love that. In the coming, you know, reading the book, I loved it. Starting out, our value system, right? Seeing how our people work together in the community. Everybody contributed. Everybody worked. How has exchanging our value system with a more Eurocentric value system affected us as a people? Well, I think that it's again, it, I think I think our self-love is sorely in need of repair. I don't. In fact, I think part of the sign that we don't really love ourselves is the the distance we go uh, to beautify ourselves. Hmm. The distance we go to do hair, the uh, the way we shop, the way we buy shoes, mm. the all. You only have to beautify an ugly thing. Come on. Yeah. Right. If a thing is already divine, mm. right, it requires no external attention. Mm. Which is why when people think of, again, when people think of Jesus, how many pairs of sandals did Jesus have? God, nobody talks about that. Yeah. You know? Yep. How many, how, how many pairs of clothes did Jesus, who, who, nobody knows. And nobody wonders it mm. because his divinity covers the question. That's what's more important. Who cares? Wow. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Who really cares? Mm. You know, um, how many pairs of shoes did Frederick Douglass have? <laughs> who gives a damn? <laughs> yeah. But it's because we honor them. Mm. But in our lack of honor of ourselves, we have to transplant that honor with materiality. Mm. So we have to have closets of clothes mm. and more shoes than we could possibly wear in a, you know, in a month. Right. It's materiality after material because we're trying to give value to a worthless thing. Come on. Hmm. I felt that. Yeah. Don't cry for me. What inspired that that book? How was that whole time of creating that that, that great masterpiece? Well, um, yes, sir. I. Um, don't, for cry, don't Cry For Me is the story of a black man on his deathbed mm -hmm. writing letters to yeah. his estranged son, trying to right the wrongs that he committed during uh, his son's life in terms of how he didn't love him, in terms of how he didn't express that love, I should say, uh, trying to explain to him the ways in which manhood, masculinity changed mm -hmm. from the 40s, 50s, through the 60s, 70s, etc. And it's a very poignant story of intimacy and, uh, and, and intentionality between black men, between mm -hmm. a father and son. And I wrote this book because black men, black fathers and sons, we've not done intimacy well since we left Africa mm. 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. we've, we've been afraid of our intimacy. We're afraid to touch each other, mm. except in reprimand. Mm. We'll beat each other's bodies. That's right. We'll do that. Yeah. But we won't touch them soothingly. Showing affection to each other. Yeah. yeah. We won't hold each other's hand. Mm. Right. But I might knock you the fuck out. You know. <laughs> right. You know. That's real. And, and that's very important. Yeah. Right. It's very important. And so, and so, and so, as black boys, we grow up learning that part of the way you show your masculinity is the extent to which you're willing to beat black flesh. Mm. And how well can you do it? <laughs> and the bottom line, the ultimate discussion, the ultimate confrontation, the ultimate alleviation mm. of, of, of black tension is, can you whip my ass? Mm. I don't care what the I don't care what the argument is. It boils down always <laughs> to can you beat me? Mm. That's a deep thing. Mm. That's a deep thing. When when the ultimate question is always which one of us can destroy the other? That's an animalistic existence, you know? And so I wrote this book because I wanted us to see as black men, what is the cost? What has been and what is the cost of, um, of our lack of intimacy? Mm. And how much different would our lives be if we as black men were able to, to hold each other's hand to say, brother, I love you, hmm. right? And there are all kinds of substitutes we do. You know, we say, um, 
uh, I have a friend of mine who just says the word love when he, mm. he says love. And I says, well, well, that's the verb, but what's the subject? Love what? Who, who's love who? doing this loving? Yeah, that's right? right. But what I realized is he's, he's, he, he's figured out a safe way. To say I love you. Right. Mm. That's exactly right. Without the intimacy. Mm. Right. He just throws the verb out into the world. Mm. Right. Um, or we'll say, you know what? Um, we can't say, brother, you are beautiful. Mm. We can say, hey, yo, man, that's fresh. Mm. Hey, man, you look all right. <laughs> See, there are all these substitutes. Right. Because the real vulnerability, we have not yet been given permission or we have not taken permission to, 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 to tell ourselves um, that we are fully and absolutely human in that way. Mm. But we do it to God every day. We say, I love God. But, but according to uh, um, King James scripture, how can you say you love me, mm. whom you have never seen? But you don't love your brother. Right? Which, but, and here's the translation of that. You know what God is really saying? What is he saying? You might not like me. <laughs> mm. If you, don't, if you yeah, met me face to face, you really right. might not like me. That's right. Wow. Wow. You really might not like me yeah. because surely God's standard is higher than ours. Mm. So loving your brother might be the easier thing to do. Start there. That's one interpretation. You know what another interpretation is? If you love your brother, you won't need to love me. Mm. That will do. Mm. That will be sufficient. That love will be such an ecstasy. Mm. That you'll find God in it. Mm. I'm, I, don't, I don't know that God is something separate from what we are when we come together. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and so I wrote that book to really invite us as black men to consider what has been the price of our inability to love each other fully. And I'm going to say this too. Mm -hmm. One of the things which I think we've never examined. I think there are ways we abuse black women because we come to the table unloved. Hmm. I think as black men, especially heteronormative black men, mm -hmm. I think there are ways we use black women's emotional space, we use black women's sexual space, mm. we use black women's physical space, wherein to try to get all of the love and nurturing we need. And I think mm. we drain women. Explain, Dr. Black. Because, because I, I think- I love this. Because, I, yeah, I, I think we drain women. I mm. don't think women drain us that way because mm. women freely love each other. Mm. Women touch each other. Women can do each other's hair. Mm. They go That's to the true. bathroom together. That's you know, true. we see it all the time. You don't know no men who go to the bathroom together. Nah. If a brother says, hey man, come go to the bathroom with me. <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're right, you're right. But women do it all the time. You're right, you're right. All the time. Fix my hair for me in the bathroom. Absolutely. Women's, right. women's, women can sleep in the bed with each other. Mm. Why, why can't we do the same? Mm. When mm. when sixteen year old boys spend the night, somebody sleeps on the floor. Yeah, why? Mm. Sixteen year old girls lay in the bed all the time. Mm. Challenges all those ideas. Yes, yeah. and but but see, we're not. We won't answer the question. Why? What are brothers scared of? Mm. See, we can't answer it. Mm. We won't answer it. Mm. And why won't women? What is it that women don't fear that we do? Mm. Do most brothers fear like I would touch you, mm. so I better sleep on the floor? Oh yeah, it starts getting yeah. it starts getting see it's, yeah. it gets real thick. Mm -hmm. It starts getting real mm -hmm. intense. Or it's like, no, nah, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to smell no man dirty feet. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not it. Mm -hmm. That's not it. Because mm -hmm. he can shower just like you get. <sighs> see, that's not it. Mm -hmm. That's not it. But since we're not willing to do the analysis, mm -hmm. what but what we will then do is go to a woman then right, mm -hmm. um, and we ab we abuse women in all kinds of ways, even even. Even the inability to know what it really means to make love to a woman. Yeah, that's which deep. is a very different thing than sex, especially now too. You know, with like OnlyFans, pornography, all sure, of that. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure. Please explain yeah. though, Doctor Black. Sure. Hey, I'm listening. Now you know, I'm listen, still I'm listening. Just, yeah, I just want to. You, <laughs> you know, can keep I, going. I you good. plant the seed of that. You I, good? I think that's very important though. Yeah. Um, because many many times we're we're really trying to extract from women the physical nurturing that we don't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But that's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a problem. It's a prop it's a problem in any relationship if that person is the only source of of, uh, of your love and nurturing. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. That's good. That's a problem. Love, right? Right now on social media, you know, you have the manosphere, you got women versus men on Instagram talking about love, black love. Sometimes and I've I've heard you expound um, upon this point as well about a woman, you know, she can say, I want a sensitive man. 
but not too sensitive, right? How do we try to have like a safe space to where a man, he can be in touch with his emotions? And then is that possible to still have like a balance to where he's not quote unquote too sensitive or is that thought process itself toxic? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what too sensitive means. Right, see. right, right. But but see, let's be honest. Generally, what we mean by too sensitive is is he too woman like? Mm. That's what we're really saying. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because what again? What does too sensitive mean? Right. Like when is he allowed to be fully sensitive? Hmm. If his mama dies, can he weep openly? Can he cry finally? Yeah. Right. See, I mean, and, and must it take his mother's death? Mm. You see. So. Um, I'm not quite sure what that means, mm -hmm. except that I know in this culture how much we hate femininity in boys. Mm -hmm. I'm very clear of that, mm -hmm. right? And that's probably more, that's probably more that's of what about, we mean. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. Black fathers showing love to their sons, right? Why do you think that, like so many times for um, a dad, he can say, good job, but not I love you or I'm proud of you. Why do you think it's, it's so hard to show that love? But then, you know, sometimes with like a grandson, you can hug on him more. The grandson loves uh, the grandfather, but the father, he doesn't get that same love sometimes. So why is it so hard to show love to your Because son? I think the grand, what the grandfather knows and the older a man gets, mm. what he realizes is that most masculinity is bullshit. When he starts to get older, he starts to see yeah. those things. He, he, when you start getting older, you realize <clears throat> that most of the things upon which one has built one's life, it's meaningless. Mm. It has nothing to do with anything. Mm. Right. And the, the further you get in life, the, the closer you get to imagining fa facing God. Mm. And when you face God, will God really care? Mm. Will that really matter? Mm. Like, really? Mm. You know, um, and 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 again, most of it is most most masculinity is performance for power and privilege. Mm. Right. There's a certain way you walk. Like, as, as I said, there's a certain way you most of that is because we think women like it. Mm. And so a woman is going to attach herself to me because of this masculine performance I'm doing. Mm. Well, once she does and once you get married, why, well, what you doing now? The show's over. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So mm. as he gets older, then you raise a kid. But then but then you want your son to have somebody you want, you mm. know, and then you want your son to produce. That's true. And yeah. then you want your son to reproduce. Yeah. Right. Um, but the problem is that it's all a game. And there are some people who are sent to the world to reproduce, but not people. Mm. That's a bar. Everybody's not supposed to reproduce a person. Hmm. Some people are supposed to reproduce ideas. That's right. Some people are supposed to reproduce spirit. Hmm. Right? Everything in the world does not reproduce a thing, a physical thing. Some things reproduce notions of things. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, what does the wind reproduce? Mm. But we definitely want it. Mm. You see? Yes, sir. Right. What does the water reproduce? Mm. The fish reproduce fish. But if the water is not present, the fish have no context. <sighs> so we do need the water. You can't live without it. Everything has a role. Yeah. Yeah. And, but everything is not supposed to rename itself. That's really arrogance. Hmm. Even even this whole, you know, uh, uh, um, Willie James, Willie James Jr., Willie James II, Willie, Four, uh, yeah. most men dream of naming something after them. Yeah, yeah. But what's so interesting about that is, I think a, I think a brother should only consider that if he's truly excellent. Mm. Hey, you got to be great. To I don't know that you name, should huh? consider that just because you black and male and exist. That's heavy. That's heavy. Name something after you if God would be proud of it. Mm. Not just because it looks like you. <laughs> what is yeah. that? Come on. You know. Hey, you preaching, Dr. Black. Y'all, mm. we about to challenge your ideas, notions, all of those things. I love this conversation. In the coming, um, our overall relationship with the water, right? Yes, yes. You know, knowing that life begins with the water. Yes. What type of uh, spiritual connection took place during that time, right? Of being on that boat of a people who were African people who came from different tribes to now about to change into a different group of people or names here in America. What happened on those ships? Well, I think it's water? first important for us to get clear that none of us came from tribes. Okay. Right. We came from nations of people. Come on. Yes, sir. And the reason the language is important for sure is because 
when we talk about other people in the world, we never talk about them in tribes. That's very true. Right. There were yes. no European tribes. That's very true. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, because tr the terms like tribe, terms like village, mm -hmm. right, make people think of primitive, uncultured yep. folks. Yes, sir. You, you, you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Right. And so th these these people from various African nations who are put together in these ships, they they birthed spiritual traditions even on these ships yeah. coming across the water. Yeah. Right. One of those traditions they birth is their relationship to the water. Mm -hmm. Right. Because when the ships land, Caleb, black folks start singing about their time on the water and in these ships. Mm -hmm. And they're singing about them so that future generations will know that it's the water that actually carried them here. Mm -hmm. Right. This is why when we get when we get to America, we start singing wait in the water. Mm -hmm. Wait, we start singing God's going to trouble the water. Mm -hmm. We start singing the old ship of Zion. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we're, we're trying to leave a legacy for future generations to know that it's actually the water mm. yes, that sir. did us the favor. Right. Mm -hmm. It was the waterway that was the highway yes, sir. along which we traveled mm. in order to get to this place called mm. America. Mm -hmm. So water is sacred. Water is holy, which means if you're going to get free, you got to go to the water. Mm. Well, how do we know? Because then when it's time to get free, now you got to cross the Mississippi mm. to move from the south north. That's See, right. everywhere we're going, water is waiting on us, mm. which means if you can really understand what I'm saying, Water then becomes a spiritual entity in the community, right? And which is why we pour a thing called libation. That's right. The whole point of a libation is to say and to honor the water hmm. because you can't live without it. Mm. The body is three-fourths water, mm. right? But the water also is doing a spiritual work among a spiritual people. Yeah. Black folks get baptized, but we... you, you, we, you they would dunk us yeah. under the water, <laughs> For you sure. know, yes. right? Yes. But see, all of these references to water is really saying, don't miss the spiritual significance mm. of what water is, mm. why we've needed the water, the role the water played mm. in black life, the role the water plays in African spirituality, mm -hmm. right? And when you know that and when you come to understand that, you'll then know that water is, in fact, a cleansing agent and a healing agent. Mm -hmm. So when you get in trouble, when you need to start over, when you need to get restored, get to the water. That's right. Ooh, it's getting good. It's getting good. Yeah. Hurricanes, right? in the book as well very interesting hurricanes they take that same track as the right. quote-unquote middle passage yeah, right yeah um what type of lasting effect do you think spiritually that the transatlantic slave trade played on the water well for those of us who know mm. see when we when, when we go to to the beach yeah if we really understood this before we got in the water before we start playing before we start walking around cute and sexy which i ain't <laughs> mad about yeah we would pay homage to the water first. Hmm. Before see, you got see, in. See, African people, before we go to the beach and start being fly, hmm. our first role is to wade a little way into the water and to stop and look across the horizon and to give thanks. Hmm. Because that water holds the spirit of millions of African people who traded their life for ours. Hmm. And not to acknowledge that is the first sin of black existence mm. in the diaspora. Mm. Some of those folks jumped overboard in order, in order that they could move into the ancestral realm and become our strength. Mm -hmm. Not to acknowledge that is the greatest sin conceivable. Mm. It's like you don't find any Jews, mm. right, who can walk by a, a Holocaust museum and never blink twice. Mm. Right. You don't find that. That's mm. not going to happen. Mm. Right. And that should be true for black people, too. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I vote for taking kids to the beach. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the first thing we're going to do before you play in the sand and build castles. <laughs> right. Yes, is we're going to stop and we're going to pay homage to this water. That's right. That must be done. That yeah. absolutely positively must be done. Mm -hmm. In the coming, hearing you speak about these people had names. Sure. Why is it so important for, for us as a people to not have this like misconception of all right, transatlantic slave trade that happened, but not. <sighs> like truly just understanding that these were our people and actual human beings like me and you who had names, who had identities, culture, spirituality, all of those things as well. You know, um, I feel like you're trying to wind me up. I am. Man. I'm I trying am, my I best am. not to go Hey, I'm hoping that it's working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. See, the importance of names 
is because I don't, have you ever met a human being without them? No. Nor have I. So if you ever meet human beings without names, you don't have human beings. Hmm. It's cargo, right? Right, so, cargo, so, so, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so we are the only people who, who folks could talk about us and write about our history without ever, ever, ever naming us. Mm -hmm. But that's because in the Western imaginative space, mm -hmm. right, black existence, this is not a history of human beings. It's a history of, of these black items in relationship to white supremacy. Mm -hmm. We're really studying white people's history of what they did to black people. That's not the same thing as black history. Mm -hmm. That's not black history. Mm. Like the Middle Passage is really white history. Mm. Well, how do you know? Who owned the ships? Mm. Those are not our boats. Mm. Where were they headed? Somebody else was driving those boats. Mm. That's European history. That's the history of how Europeans moved Africans from Africa and spread us throughout the diaspora. It's not mm. black history. Mm. Black history is what we did to survive it when they were not looking. Mm. That's black history. Mm -hmm. Right. And if we're not if we're not careful, we keep studying white understandings of black history, of black people, mm -hmm. which is why in schools they talk about Martin Luther King. You know, this yeah. is what all the kids know, mm -hmm. because Martin Luther King disrupted whiteness. Mm -hmm. See, what black people did specifically for black people mm -hmm. is not in the history books. Mm -hmm. Well, Daniel Black, what do you mean? For example. Black people know the difference between dressing and stuffing. <laughs> Anybody black knows the difference between dressing and stuff. There's no history book mm. that's going to teach you that. But we know the difference. That's right. Right. And, and we, we, we know the difference between dressing and stuffing. We know the difference between chitlins and hog moss. Yeah. We know the difference between cleaning up and straightening up. <laughs> For sure. Especially Let as a kid. Let me off this podcast. No, 